Make force, 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 force. The force will be with you always. Welcome to Star Wars Uplink, your source for everything Star Wars gaming. Each week, your hosts will go over the news, updates, and more that have been happening in the galaxy far, far away. Come join us and our community of like-minded fans as we dive deeper into Star Wars games, past, present, and future, Star Wars lore, and the new shows and movies as they get announced and released. Welcome to this episode of Star Wars Uplink. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin, and as always, I'm joined by Sydney Laurel. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. So, this episode of the podcast we're going to be talking about the respawn games that are in development in the star wars franchise as well as the most recent episode of the book of boba fett aka mando season 2.5 yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) but uh before we get started how are you doing how am i doing yeah how are you doing you pumped (laughs) to talk about some star wars today let's do it I, I I love the experience of having a Star War to talk around. Even if it's not my favorite Star War, it's still <laughs> great to have something in the universe that we can all kind of rally around and mm. just have some updates around. Like it, it's fun, especially around like the gaming side of things where it's been so dry until now, really. That is but true. like twenty twenty one especially 2020, there were dark times for Star Wars gaming. <laughs> so it's it's good to it's good to have something to look forward to. And I think today the Hollywood Reporter uh, announced that the Obi-Wan show will come out in May of this year. Now that I'm excited for. Ooh. Yeah. So I think that's, that's the uh, initial re- release for that, according to... The Hollywood Reporter, and they've been pre- they're usually pretty pretty good about reporting uh, those those kinds of things. So hopefully that's true. Um, uh, Scout, uh, who I follow on Twitter, friend of the podcast, he he said that uh, May fourth is on a Wednesday, and they keep all these shows coming out on Wednesdays. So that would be the perfect time to that drop an Obi Wan show. A serendipitous time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm so pumped. Really looking forward to what they do with that character. And I imagine with how much Book of Boba Fett has tied into Mandalorian, for good or bad, depending on your v- viewpoints, um, I expect we'll see some tie-ins. Oh, yeah. There's got to be. I mean, it's kind of like the the next uh, Marvel Universe here going on. We've got the now the Star Wars universe going on. So I feel like they can't not... Well, and, the SCU, yeah, SWCU. And there's so many directors and people that were working in The Mandalorian mm-hmm. that it's like, well, now we just have a giant pool of people to pull from. And, and you know, it just seems like anything goes and everyone's connected and it's just this one giant community yeah. making Star Wars now. <laughs> I have to revise my statement because I just remembered when this was set. This is set after the events of the Revenge of the Sith. Right. Yeah. So I wonder if they do tie it in how they would tie it in. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe they'll just introduce new characters like Rebels people. That's true. We have that's that's where we're gonna get all the rebels mm-hmm. people. It's crazy the amount. We'll, we'll, <laughs> okay, no, we're, I'm, I was just about to spoil the next episode, so I'm, yeah. I'm gonna wait until we get Hold to up. that. <laughs> we're talking TV shows. We gotta get back to the games. <laughs> <laughs> but something that was in Mandalorian season two. Skip ahead like two minutes if you don't want to get spoiled around episode or season two of the Mandalorian. Um, which came out how long ago? <laughs> it was like a long time <laughs> it feels ago. It was like a long time ago. But like, Ahsoka looks freaking great for her age. How old is she? Like 60? <laughs> uh, yeah, not to mention like how long she stayed in the, I don't know. I don't know. She, yeah. No, well, I don't know. Who knows? Because she was in the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. She went through the entirety of the original trilogy to yep. reach uh, mm-hmm. the Mandalorian. <laughs> Okay, but this is something that you haven't seen in Rebels, because you have not seen Rebels. I have not Rebels. watched it, so calm down. <laughs> uh, yeah, she gets kind of pulled through time. There's time travel in Rebels? Yep. What? <laughs> oh my gosh, there's time travel in everything now. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. It's a I'm, thing. I'm gonna have you, to freaking pick yeah, up Rebels again. Yeah, we have again. to. We have to go through the whole goodness shebang. gracious. Because I'm I'm on episode. I'm on season three of mm-hmm. the Rebels. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I just have to jump jump in again. Yeah. I'm gonna jump in at season two. <laughs> I'm I, I'm gonna jump in at season three because I've already watched the first two, and apparently, season yeah. three is when it all gets fantastic, mm-hmm. and that's the best Star Wars ever. Yeah. Um. I just. <laughs> Where Ezra grows up a little bit, and then we can actually get to the meat of things. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now we'll, we'll talk about Book of Boba Fett later on in the episode. So let's let's talk about respawn Star Wars games. Just you reconsider playing that message for him. I love Respawn so much. Uh, (laughs) Respawn's great. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. They have done such a good job of consistently delivering fantastic experiences in both the Titanfall universe and the Star Wars universe so far. Uh, We've gotten Titanfall 1, Titanfall 2, Jedi Fallen Order, and we're going to get three more Star Wars games. Yeah. So if if you missed out on this news, Respawn, uh, an EA studio, is developing three new Star Wars games, two of which they're in direct development with, so their studios are working on it, and then the third is uh, developed by another studio and then oversaw or overseen. I don't know. Overseas sawed by uh, <laughs> by respawn, so they're they're the one making the overall decisions, and I think this is fantastic. I think I think they should be the Star Wars studio. They should be mm-hmm. the Star Wars and the Apex studio. That's that's something well, that and I Titanfall. Think, I feel like Titanfall. Well, is, Apex is technically in the Titanfall universe, depending yeah, on how you look at it. Yeah, so maybe it's more Titanfall mm-hmm. and Star Wars. I think that's a great combo. But like I, I, I think they've said that they're not actively working on Titanfall three right now. Well, sure. I hope they do, mm-hmm. but it doesn't really make sense for them to make another one. They just keep on expanding Apex, and I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, but of these three games, we're going to have one which is a sequel to Star Wars Jedi: Fallen Order, which mm-hmm. is the official title of the series, which is Star Wars Jedi. So mm-hmm. we're getting Star Wars Jedi, the sequel, whatever it's going to be titled. Um, and that is in um, that has been in active development. We've heard rumors that it is quite a long its development. It's <laughs> rumored that we may see something in, at EA Play or May the Fourth or somewhere a Star Wars celebration yeah. somewhere around there on an announcement of Star Wars Jedi, the sequel. That'd be exciting. Be great. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm so pumped. The first one's so good. And mm-hmm. like I saw there was this tweet somewhere. I, I don't know who it was, but someone was like, can we just give Jedi Fallen Order some love? I know it's been getting hated on. I was like, who's Why? hating? Who is hating on Jedi Fallen Order? It's such a fantastic yeah. experience. It's a great game. It is a tight experience. It got some really cool updates after launch. Mm. Like they've got the arena mode. and It's, it's great. Yeah. And the story is fantastic. I think it's just that it it shows how great Star Wars can be in video game form, telling a good canon story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to point out the fact that Respawn's in charge of all this is really exciting to me Mm -hmm. because I feel like they are just master storytellers. They are. And they just just, see the big picture and they know how to pull you through all the way along. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just... I'm really excited. Yeah. Because that's, this is a great team to be handling, mm-hmm. I think, uh, Star Wars. Because I agree. They're just, um, yeah, I was going to say something, but then mm-hmm. I hit that. Next <laughs> so, <laughs> they have the guts to make the decisions that Star Wars needs. Yes. Yes. Something that has always struggled with Dice, who I, they, they pitched another Battlefront 3. While I'm sad another Battlefront 3 isn't coming, I'm also glad that it's not Dice because Dice yeah. can't do. A game like Battlefront 3 needs to be. Mm-hmm. But Respawn, Respawn knows when they wanted to make a Star Wars Jedi game, they said, we're making a Star Wars Jedi game. Right. And Lucasfilm said, no, you should make a game on bounty hunters or this thing or that thing. And they said, no, if you want a Star Wars game from us, it is going to be lightsabers and Jedi. Mm-hmm. That is what we're going to make. Yep. 
And that is what Star Wars needs is those strong voices who know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think that is it's so exciting to me. I think that Respawn is such an incredible studio in the game industry. I mean, Apex is one of the best. Apex is a great experience for gameplay and community and a live service title. It's it's how you do games right. And then Titanfall 2 is probably one of the best feeling games I've ever played in a multiplayer shooter. Like yeah. the controls are so great. Mm-hmm. Well, you you've played the you've played the Titanfall games too, right? You've played Titanfall 2 and you've played Apex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, played Titanfall 2 is a very over statement. I actually never got through the uh <laughs> The tutorial? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I got I got stuck on the on the like test your skill thing to like trying to jump up on the walls and get mm. get good sort of thing. And I'm like, oh I'm gonna get good before I even get in this game. And I shouldn't have done that because then I was just like ah. You 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 had the bar too high for yourself yeah. to go mm-hmm. through that. It's like I wanna be at the top of the list and then <laughs> Lo, I never, never did finish the game. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, I've probably put in, I haven't put a whole lot of hours in Titanfall two, but I've put in, I think ten to fifteen hours. Like it's not a ton, but that was mostly playing with friends and uh, the co op mode that they have, and a little bit of uh, just random multiplayer. Um. Still need to hop through and play the campaign because I've heard mm-hmm. the campaign's really, really good. Yeah. Um, and we've I, I don't I don't want to know how many hours I've put into Apex. It's oh, been a no. while since I hopped into Apex, yeah. but I put in a lot of hours. I was playing it day one. I, I, <laughs> I read a Verge article. It was like, oh, hey, look, Respawn's made a new game. It's free to play, and they didn't announce it previously. <laughs> Download it today. Yep. I remember because I was at your apartment, mm-hmm. and... <laughs> I brought my Xbox so we yep. could play. We did an Apex party. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. So day one, season zero, I've been playing since then. And I've hopped in. I think I missed the last two seasons, uh, but I've yeah. played pretty regularly. Yeah, I've been kind of spotty on the seasons that I jump in on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just hard when you have a bunch of friends who are a lot better than you. And then yep. you're like, dang it, I'm just... Just lacking behind. Uh-huh. Hey guys, thanks for carrying me all the way through. <laughs> like, uh. yeah, and like Apex is really sweaty right now mm-hmm. because so many people are playing it and they're so good at it. When Call of Duty Warzone was having the big hacker issue, a lot of Call mm. of Duty players went to Apex. Apex. Yeah, to keep sharp, keep yeah, fresh. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Respawn is such a fantastic game. It is. They're also uh, on top of Star Wars Jedi, the sequel. We're also going to be getting a first-person shooter game from them. We don't know if it's story-based or if it's going to be an online shooter. Mm-hmm. I would love it either way. Yeah. I'd be happy. Uh, I would love to see a Respawn take on a first-person shooter story-driven give- game. Maybe it has a spinoff uh, that's multiplayer. I, I I would just love to see a continued service game from respawn around star wars i think they would offer so much that's fantastic there that i i I think it'd be a shame not to but again i would also be happy if they went full single player that all these Mm -hmm. games that we're going to be getting are like single player campaign games now this game is um headed by the what is it executive producer for the original star wars battlefront games and yeah how does that make you feel (laughs) let let me say that again this is led by the original executive or one of the executive producers on the original star wars battlefront games not the dice ones Mm -hmm. the original 2004 and 2005 ones (laughs) which brings me so much joy Mm -hmm. that someone with that much tenure and also has experience with a star wars first person shooter and third person shooter game oh man it just makes me so excited Either way, I think it's going to be great. I would love to see something in the Clone Wars era. I think they could do something really cool there. Um, because we haven't seen something along those lines, I would love to see something that is in the original trilogy. But again, most of the video games that we've gotten have been original trilogy or original trilogy adjacent. Even Fallen Order, we got to see a little bit of the Clone Wars, but it was in glimpses. Uh, by Clone Wars, where, what do you mean? Are you talking like... that? That The prequel time period. Okay. Episode 1 to Revenge of the Sith era. 
okay. the height of the Jedi. You've got the clone troopers. I think they could offer something really cool there. I mean, we've gotten the clone commandos, commandos. right? Could we've you the could you imagine game. if they're working on a clone commandos game? <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh my gosh! But we have seen that before. What do you mean? The the commandos game, like what is the first person shooter? Mm-hmm. We've had a game like that. Yeah, we think... had the original clone commandos game. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Do you mm-hmm. think they're going to try and like vamp it up? Or I would love to see like a sequel of it or something with those characters. Yeah. We saw, I, th- I think it was uh, Wolf 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 in collaboration with Cinematic Captors. They did the, a preview of uh, oh <laughs> what it would gosh. look like in Unreal Engine, yes, which is was... just incredible. <laughs> yeah, Give that game to me now. <laughs> exactly. I would love to see something like that yeah. from Respawn because I think they could do such a good job of telling a story with the Clone Commandos. Mm-hmm. You have that tight Tight elite Mm -hmm. unit you have the characters that each have their little bit of personality and it's clear you you go your special ops unit and boom but like i think that'd be such a good story well what's interesting is that it doesn't have to be even commandos per se uh every clone had a squad Mm -hmm. so it could just be a squad yeah with their own personalities and whatnot Mm -hmm. um because we saw that oh what was that in i think that Clone Wars, I think, or maybe I'm thinking of. I think um, we saw some of Clone or Bad Batch. Bad Batch, yeah, yeah, Bad that's Batch, what I'm of. yeah. We Bad saw Batch. some Clone Commandos and Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. Um, but were they Commandos or were they just squads? I think they were Commandos. Oh, okay. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I think they were a not squad, and not the one that tree people. No, they, like they're a unit, and then they're squads of Clone Commandos, and then that was focuses focused on like the height of the height, hmm. uh, like the original ones. Um, yeah. What would be cool, too, is if it ties into prequel, like the prequel flashbacks of mm. um, J- Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Ooh. That would be cool if we got, like, even if it's just a little s- small cameo of um, Cal's uh, <laughs> teacher. True. That would be that cool. That is true. Yeah, because we don't know a whole lot about him. Mm-hmm. Even like you know they they could create their own little Star Wars universe uh-huh. that they have their own cameos. Like a little pocket of yeah, exactly. Star Wars that <laughs> they can just go wild with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see something like that. Mm-hmm. And then the third one, the one that you're probably going to be most excited about. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's adjacent to some of your favorite games. Uh, I don't know that I'd call them my favorite games. A big they just inspirational, hold a lot of nostalgia. Yeah, a big part of your video game upbringing. Mm-hmm. Uh, your dad was a Civ player, too. Yes. So Hardcore. In collaboration with Bit Reactor, this is an independent studio that is relatively new, but it's founded by the developers of XCOM and Civilization. And they're working on a strategy Star Wars game. That's about all that we know. <laughs> but do you think that that's like the least in development one, or is that just probably? Yeah. Considering strategy games seem to, they seem to have a lot like they, a long time, but they last like a, a, a long time to develop them, but they last pretty long. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of the lifespan of playing the game. Yeah. So I would I would imagine that's gonna be the furthest down the schedule. Yeah, I mean I'm pretty new to like hearing about game news and whatnot, and but I just I don't feel like strategy games are pushed very hard. They're huge. And yeah, but I feel like there's. <laughs> I just mean, Age of Empires Five I huge. think came out. Right. And that's a huge like they're big. Yeah, but they're, they're like certain titles that are big. And then mm-hmm. all the other ones are just kind of like, eh. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone no? that I've talked to that are into strategy games are like really into strategy games. Mm-hmm. And they hear all the news and they're to the level of like me with Star Wars and gaming news. That's how they are with like all the strategy games. Oh, okay. But I think there is a large portion of those players that literally just play one game. Yeah. Like they're going to play well, League of Legends you, forever. You they're going to play World of Warcraft forever. That's that's the idea. It's strategy. You have to keep perfecting your own mm-hmm. strategy. So. I mean, you guys still play Age of Empires too, right? Yep. <laughs> it's great. So I, th- I think that I think that's going to be a huge part to like Disney in terms of like its catalog of Star Wars games to have mm-hmm. that variety. They've yeah. got the mobile games yeah, pretty locked sure. down. But uh, to have a first-person shooter is going to be great. 
to have a a franchise that's going to be telling those really good stories from Respawn and Star Wars Jedi is going to be great. I could totally see that that being like a three or four, hopefully, game franchise. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really cool if it went like the Jedi Academy route where it does have a few entries into the, the, the franchise and it becomes like, oh yeah, I'm so pumped about the next introduction it becomes like the star wars tv shows of video games right we're gonna be getting Mm -hmm. those types of things i think that'd be cool and i'd love to see it stay in that eight to 16 hours depending on if you get messed up with the final boss and have to (laughs) fight her for three hours that kind of time frame i think that would be great i'm not speaking from experience here not at all (laughs) i think that would be great and then they've got the open world game coming from ubisoft Mm -hmm. um so i think I mean, it's so bright for Star Wars games right now. Again, it's going to take a little bit. It's right. going to be until 2023, 2024, until we start I to mean, see those big games come out. I'm saying it had better take a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Take all the time that you please. need and make sure that you give it the time instead mm-hmm. of just canceling it like EA usually does. Yeah. And I think that's the bonus, too, is Respawn's going to be working on it. And they go through a lot of iterations and a lot of testing of okay, this is the game that we think we're going to make. Let's get a small team working on it, get a prototype going, and see if it's going to be worth the time before they go into active development. Um, And I I feel like they're communicative. Yes. Like they talk to their fans and they're always talking about like, hey, this is how Mm -hmm. it's going sort of thing. Exactly. I mean, Apex, you get like by the hour updates if something's on, Mm -hmm. like you're going to get a thread. They have daily communication and then... And that's huge. Yeah, that's huge. That's how you build trust, and that's how you make it make people excited that you're going to be making a game. Mm-hmm. So I, I I am so pumped. Uh, Vince Ampella uh, is a legend. He is hopefully not to get too far into the weeds with like Battlefield, but he is one of the new. Uh, he's like the new Mister Battlefield guy that's going to be leading the charge in the new direction for the franchise. So hopefully, mm-hmm. he does with Battlefield what he's been doing with Star Wars mm-hmm. and with Apex. Yeah. So hopefully, they they have have it going on there. Yeah. Uh, I'm super excited. Yeah, should be good. Now let's take a little bit of a break, and we'll hop back and talk about Book of Boba Fett. This podcast is a production of Uplink Media Group. Uplink is a podcast network dedicated to highlighting the love and experience of gaming and pop culture. Check out our other shows, The Battlefield Show, Star Wars Uplink, and The Forge, the Halo Infinite podcast, as well as our YouTube channels for even deeper dives into Battlefield, Star Wars, and more. YouTube.com slash Uplink podcast and StarWarsUplink.com. Only different in your mind. You must unlearn. What you have learned. Okay, Book of Boba Fett. A.K.A. Mando yeah. 2.5. Yeah, Mando 2.5. Uh, we did see Boba Fett this episode. Yeah, for 10 seconds. Yep. Congrats, Boba. You made it in the episode. <laughs> you scowled your little way in there. Yep. Okay, <laughs> so let's do our, spo- like, as usual, yes. let's do our spoiler-free overview. Let's talk about... And that was not a spoiler to say that Bo- Boba was in there. Yeah, exactly. Because it's the book of Boba Fett. He should be in every single episode. He should be, yes. Uh, anyway. <laughs> spoiler free. Spoiler free. I really enjoyed it. I think it had a good flow. I like that it took its time in areas. Mm-hmm. I, I like how we were like, oh, we're going to be in this area for a little bit. We're going to take some time. I thought that was really good. Yeah. Uh, I think the next episode is going to be the finale, Yeah. which I don't understand how they're... They're not going to wrap this up. No. There's, there's no got to be a second season, right? Uh-huh. Like, there's there's no way. I mean, it's Disney. Of course there's a second season. Yeah. Of course they're going to string it along. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably my take on it is, um, well, I got pre-hyped up about it, so I set the bar pretty high. Uh-huh. And then... Well, all these people are on Twitter <laughs> on Tuesday at 12 p.m., and they're watching it. I wake up and I see all of these tweets like, oh my gosh, did you see the new episode of Boba Fett? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I got all that from Sage. Uh-huh. And uh, it wasn't quite what I was thinking. It felt a lot more like a lead up to episode. Like they're leading up to more of what the big thing. That's yeah, going definitely. To happen. They're, um, they're laying the foundation yeah. for hopefully something really cool in the next episode yeah. or next season, possibly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But 
It was a good episode. Yeah, though. I think so. Not not as like just jaw dropping and like ah as the mm-hmm. uh, Mandalorian episode. Was. Yeah, but still, I'd say the second best episode yeah, of the second se- best season so far. so far. Yeah. yeah. We're starting to get, things are starting to get dicey. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. Things are coming together. Yeah. It's like, okay, no, there is a threat here Mm -hmm. and we're starting to actually feel it. Yeah. But it wasn't set up until the last episode that there was even going to be a threat. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah. So now let's hop in and talk about some spoilery stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if you've not listened or not watched the next episode of Book of Boba Fett, turn away. Or if you don't care. Just pause here. Go watch the show. Come come back. Come right back. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, Book of Boba Fett. Season season one. Mm -hmm. Episode six. We're back with the Mandalorian. We got a short glimpse of him, of of Boba Fett (sighs) at some point. But no, I, no, it was way later on. Like, yeah, it, it, like it was like in the middle, it wasn't, wasn't the it? It was like the later middle. Yeah, because we opened with Mando mm-hmm. on this like China planet. It looks like bamboo everywhere. These yep. gorgeous mountains. Yeah, it was it was great. We see R two D two actually pretty one. Like uh, thank goodness we took a break from the sand. Exactly. <laughs> we needed that. <laughs> we needed that refresher. I mean, we did get some other planets in the other Mandalorian yeah. episode. Um, but this was nice. Nice to see some green. Nice to see something a little different. So mm-hmm. we see, uh, we see R two D two leads into this open field. And all I just want to know is what is in the package. What is he giving yes. the Grogu? Just tell me. Uh-huh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, I I love, I love the setting. I love the kind of humor with R two D two still being sassy, leading, mm. uh, <laughs> uh, leading him to this bench that these but- robots. The ant droids were interesting. They're so cool. They're, They're building neat. the new temple for mm-hmm. Jedi for Luke's Jedi Academy. It's a good. Uh, it's a good idea. Yeah, almost too ant like, but mm-hmm. but it works. It works. Yeah, I'll they go were pretty with cool. It. I'll I, go I with liked it. them. Yeah, yeah. They had a really good grit to them. Like yep. they looked very practical. And I totally knew it was a bench they were making. Yeah, when they, <laughs> it was great. That, <laughs> that played so out funny. so great. <laughs> Is that a bench? <laughs> You got the little leaves on there. It was great. Mm-hmm. Um, we see Ahsoka, mm-hmm. and uh, which was actually surprising. I was surprised. I was too. I was like like oh, I didn't get spoiled hello? by that. No. I did get spoiled that Luke was in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I I wasn't. So all yeah. of it was fresh for me. So yeah. I was like, oh, oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, honestly, I kind of thought he had more than just Grogu at this point. I. I was yeah. kind of surprised that Grogu was his only student. I was surprised by that, too. It really? seemed like he'd have a little bit more time, but yeah. I, I don't know. We'll see. I think it, it's very interesting to me, the backstory around Luke. Um, I think that'll be cool to see. Hopefully, eventually, we'll see something along those lines of what what was Luke doing? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. You're telling me that when Luke and Mandalorian season two, mm-hmm. end of it, Luke comes in, saves the day. You're telling me that Luke risked his life like that for the first student? <laughs> Whoa. And also that he has to find kids through this like very powerful I think that was I think that was the reason he was taking that time or making that effort to pick up Ro- Grogu because like only a pretty powerful Jedi person would be able to do something along those lines or led Mm -hmm. by someone who knows how to contact luke yeah i would assume he's trying to build out those connections to discover people who are force sensitive maybe i don't know that's a big question for me yeah i think that's just why i'm confused as to why grogu is his first student Mm -hmm. it's like i wouldn't think that this is where you would start yeah but okay Mm -hmm. i'll go with it (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mando is on the search to give uh, Grogu his gift mm-hmm. of the adorable little package. How do you feel about him not going to see Grogu? I think it's a good point. Mm-hmm. I think it was a good moment of the Mandalorian seeing Grogu and being like, okay, we, I, I love this little green guy so much. I'm going to get, I know, I understand what, well, he doesn't really understand what the heck's going on, no. but he understands that Grogu needs the separation yeah. to truly delve into what 
that potential is. Well, the Mandalorian himself has had that experience where mm-hmm. it was you can choose. Well, actually, I mean, kind of didn't. But no, he was, he was brought in yeah. and he was fostered and by ex- a family. Yeah, exactly. And and he understands that his life isn't what the child needs, mm-hmm. but he still loves him and yeah. will take care of him and mm-hmm. all that. So yeah, I think it was very wise of him to be led by Ahsoka to not yeah talk to the kid just to make let the kid make his own decisions Mm -hmm. yeah um so i really like that moment i do want to talk about (laughs) the fan service (laughs) (laughs) go ahead what is it so (laughs) this episode was directed by uh dave filoni who loves to put clone wars everything everywhere um I think it was really cool seeing these moments and these characters all together. And I love that Mandalorian doesn't know that he's in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. It's great. That is awesome. Like he's saying Skywalker with no sense of recognition. Mm-hmm. Like that was that was my favorite part is, is like, I'm looking for Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> like he has no idea no. who this dude mm-hmm. is. <laughs> doesn't care. No. All he cares about is Grogu. Yep. And I, I, I also wanted to kind of going back to that previous discussion that we had, like, I love the creed of Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Like, it is what the Jedi should be. Yeah. Honestly, mm-hmm. that you're going to support each other. You're going to be a community. You're going to have these attachments. You're going to, like, I, I love that side of the Mandalorian mm-hmm. creed. Like, you are so dedicated to the greater cause. But, like, you're also, like, you're going to care about each other. Right. You're going to have these moments. You're going to have conflict. You're going to have love. Like these things are going to happen to you as a Mandalorian. Right. And like even Din Djarin, who is a Mandalorian no more, is still <laughs> carrying on his own creed. Mm-hmm. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, Nothing binds quite like religion. <laughs> <laughs> Switching gears a little bit, because I do want to end on kind of the big choice and, and have some a discussion on that. But then we go into like cowboy land, which I love it when Star Wars goes cowboy. <laughs> you would. Mr. I, Red I Dead love, over there. I love Westerns. I, I love me some Westerns. Red Dead Redemption. So good. Um, I, I, I love that vibe. And like Star Wars has always been a mishmash of Western and Japanese movies mm. like that is that has been huge inspiration uh stuff like um I think uh was it Clint Eastwood movies um as well as Akira Kurosawa movies like those like there was a, a direct scene from Akira Kurosawa's movie uh Yojimbo I believe it was where all of the people are looking out of the blind, the sliding blinds oh, in. Oh, that's um, what you were referencing. What is it, Mos Pelgo? Yeah. Uh, free, free, free city or free. free what is it? <laughs> free city. Free town. I, free town. There it is. Yeah. Free town. Like that. The <laughs> the scene where all of the all of the onlookers, the city, uh, the city folk. I'll put it that way in Western terms. Are like looking out out of the window. That is a direct pull from a Akira Kurosawa movie. Hmm. Uh, in Yojimbo, which they also ripped off Yojimbo in, I think, season two of Mandalorian as well. The scene where they go, where, where we first see Ahsoka, where she's slowly yeah. taking out those yeah, guys. That, right. that is directly pulled from nice. Yojimbo as well. Well, there you go. Because um, they, they use uh, like uh, a lot, more, more, some of the more popular movies from Akira Kurosawa, they've already ripped off a bunch of. Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a little tight side change. I love that movie so much. So when I see that, it's like, oh my gosh, look, there's that shot. <laughs> it's great. Um, but we see, uh, what is his name? It's the old... Uh, the sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> and his super annoying deputy. Thank goodness he died. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's so stupid. Oh, so annoying great character for that point but like good gravy that was so frustrating i'm sorry did you grow up in the desert because it really doesn't seem like it yeah where's your street smile how did you live to be this old like yeah (laughs) uh. Cobb vanth is his name okay yeah i would never have remembered that Cobb. Cobb. Mm -hmm. 
Corn the cob. <laughs> the cob of man. <laughs> Which I love. I love his character. Oh my gosh. I think he does such a good job mm-hmm. of portraying that character. Like this weathered sheriff. But also he's also like mixed with Andy Griffith a little bit. Yeah. Like he knows everybody in town. Yeah. He's just protected, yep. doing his job. Think about it. I didn't like how unclosed he was. I I would agree as well. Like he seemed naked. He did. Like, like I was scared for him. Yeah. Like you need another coat on, man. Uh-huh. Like I just you're so thin. Put something else on, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> this bright red shirt is doing nothing for you. Yeah. Just, just put something else on. Uh-huh. He's still sad I know about it's hot, losing the armor. <laughs> but please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get something swoopy so that you're. Cool. But I think that also like, adds to his character. Like he yeah. knows, like. Yeah, I'm still I'm still pretty dang good. Like he right. took out freaking five of the pikes. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> that was so epic. That was a good that was yeah. a good moment. Uh so we get this. Uh Din Jaren is trying to uh recruit the city uh Oh, and that's the where citizens. we saw Boba. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we saw Boba. Uh they need a lot of people to take down the pikes. They go to Mos Pelgo or Mando goes to Mos Pelgo. I'm trying to remember were there a lot of people in Mos Pelgo to help them with the the sand? They did a pretty good job thing. with the sand but dragon, the crate dragon, or whatever. They had the um, sand people to help, though. They did. I feel like the sand people padded their numbers real good. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. So I don't know. It just seems like why would you? I don't. It just. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, He's just saying they were skilled, yeah, and they need as many people as they can get, yeah. Which we saw their numbers as they were huddled up in the buildings. So it's not a lot of people, no. but it's more than Boba Fett has right now. Fair. So I guess anyone, mm-hmm. especially, and it's good to have locals too. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I think one of the biggest reveals, um, was Cad Bane. Yep. <laughs> Blue boy, Cad it, Bane. Also, how old down. is he? Oh my Goodness gosh. gracious. Yeah. I love Cad Bane. I think yeah. it's cool. I would love to see him in like I a was, Battlefront game. I was super excited seeing yeah. him coming out he's of the He's such haze. a cool character. Mm-hmm. And he's the perfect like uh, cowboy bounty hunter dude. Yep. Yeah, he fit perfect. Boba Fett, <laughs> save the empire. <laughs> yeah, okay. I thought they but... could have gone a little bit more robotic-y with his voice. Mm. But mm-hmm. I love the like the rolling and the deep voice that yeah. they gave him. Yeah, that was what I was most worried about, honestly, mm-hmm. was did they get the voice right? And I think they did for they the did most pretty part. Good. They did they did yeah. all right. Yeah. It was I I'll give it to them. It's mm-hmm. not easy to copy anything about an animated show. Yeah, exactly, so, especially one so stylized. Yes. So I think they did pretty well. There was a few moments where I was like, eh, it's taking me out of the character, but. Yeah, I think overall they did pretty good. Mm -hmm. His makeup is interesting. Yeah. I don't like his mouth. I like everything else. Oh, no. Really? The mouth I could deal with, but it was the, like, scrunchiness of his face. Like, he just looked Uh angry the entire time. And yeah, granted, He's an angry fellow. Uh huh. He's also really old. He's, he's probably tired of all this. Yeah. Like he used to be cool as a cucumber. Mm-hmm. Like he is. He, I, I do agree. He looked very I think involved, eyes, and he shouldn't have been. He should have been like, "Oh, this yeah. is just another job." Yeah. Stand down, boy. Right. You don't need to get involved with this. I think his eyes were a little bit too big and too bright. Hmm. Like it was just, it was overpowering. Like there was just so much going on in his face. There's like this giant nose plate and then giant eyes and then this angry face. I like like everything, but (sighs) the mouth and the nose, the (laughs) mouth, like you can tell there's a lot going on there and he's trying to overcome the cosmetics that they have on his face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So that kind of felt kind of bad for him. You're like, oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) That, that took me out of it Mm -hmm. in terms of like, oh, this is like, I'm starting to break down this. Yeah. This makeup. Yep. Like Instead I'm noticing of believing it. the character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um and the nose It was just really squishy and I didn't like it. Was it was very big. Yes. Uh it wasn't subtle. And he's a subtle guy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But like If I saw it again, I'm sure I'd be like, oh, okay. They the did more really I good. see it, the better it looks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But his eyes are really glowing and I don't like it. <laughs> And there he is in the. See, like, look how small his eyes are. Mm-hmm. Like, he's more squinty, you know. Yeah, he is. And definitely. they couldn't do anything with the eyes, so I mm-hmm. feel like it's bright. Why not just permanently make them squint? <laughs> <laughs> you could change them from scene to scene, yeah. right? But 
I don't know, being outside and all, like, eh. mm-hmm. you're going to have your eyes wide open for all that sunlight. Mm. Yeah. I think overall they did a pretty good job. Yeah. I'm uh, he's not as square, but I think that was an intentional point. That what do you they, mean? Like, he's, he's got a lot of sharp edges. Also, he looks really old in the Clone Wars already. Yes. Yeah, they should have weathered him up a little bit more. Though he does look pretty old. I, I just hate his mouth. His mouth makes me so mad. <laughs> it makes me think of the um, the voice of Sauron. The mouth of Sauron? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mouth. Yep. <laughs> he does. Right? Yeah, he's just like, Argh. Yeah. His teeth. It's just all teeth. Uh-huh. You know, like, there's so much in his mouth because they've got to paint it. Mm-hmm. They've got to add the cosmetics on the teeth. Mm-hmm. They've got to add something to go around his existing teeth. Yep. And then they have to add the sharpness because there's so much teeth. Yeah. Do you think they went over his voice lines? Like, do you think they dubbed him? Like, or oh, like, I think definitely they dubbed yeah. him. Um. But yeah, I think they went a little overboard on the sharpness of their teeth too. Yeah. But like overall, we're getting nitpicky. Mm-hmm. We are. Uh, I was I excited think it, though. It, it like, works. Ooh. Him as a character is just so freaking awesome. Yeah. I I love his character. I think is going to be cool. Hopefully, we see more of him. Oh, because I like they can't just they can't throw not him in right there and not give the. It's fans also Dave Filoni. They're definitely going to put more of him in there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're to assume that he is hired by the Pikes. I would as- um, assume so. Yeah, that's what I would think. Hmm. I'm trying to think if he has any like other encounters with the Pikes because I know that there's a lot of Pike mm-hmm. stuff in the Clone Wars. Yeah, I would also imagine too. Like I, I doubt there's a whole lot of investment from him in the efforts there. He's right. doing it for a paycheck, yeah. obviously, oh, yeah. and he's going to do it as best to his abilities to get the best paycheck that mm-hmm. he can. He is bounty hunter through and through, sort mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah, which is interesting. It's they're going to be that kind of. I think that's going to be cool. Yeah, seeing the difference between Boba, Boba. and Sh- yeah, Shenick is it Shenick? Uh, Finnick Shan. Finnick. There uh-huh. we go. Finnick Shan and him mm-hmm. to be like they're going away. They're trying to make something different of their lives, and yeah. here is Boba was I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does he say? <laughs> Cold blooded killer. <laughs> 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 you have to smile saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Boba was a cold blooded killer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's yeah. so cool. He is cool. I just hope they keep him cool. I do cool too. Cucumber. Yeah. Overall, though, like as, as nitpicky as we are, I did say like afterwards, I was like, that is one instance where I wish they did CGI for him. Mm-hmm. I think it would have worked better. Mm. Um,. It definitely seems like if you were making a fan film, that's how you would portray Cad yeah. Bane. It's hard. It's hard when you've never seen the per- the, the character in real life. Exactly. It's a huge task mm-hmm. to be able to transfer them into real life, yep. for sure. I think they did a relatively good job yeah. with Ahsoka. Yeah. Uh, except for, like, I was look. I somehow uh, some pictures of Rebels came up, and mm-hmm. yeah, her Lekus are yeah, way tiny. longer in Rebels. Yeah. And this is supposed to be way after Rebels. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we see any Lekus in a, like the original, not the original original, but like in the prequels. She's got a little bit of the the top horny things, and then she's got I the just short mean, ones. Like other random characters in the background, like if we've seen. So she's the same done. species as um, the one red and white Jedi. Yeah, and didn't they're they the have, same species? Yeah, she had much larger. The older ones. you get. The bigger they are, it's but a. She's pretty it's, old. She's pretty she's mature like 60, now. She's like sixty, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, we're not. I would imagine so, because like she lived through Anakin's upbringing. She matured mm-hmm. through that. Yeah. And then the entirety of Luke's like I'm upbringing. Pretty, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of when she kind of gets pulled to the void. Um. Something like that. I don't know. I it, It's all a blur. She's got to be getting up there in age, right? Yeah, she's got to be. She's got to be at her full growth by now. But she's stunted, apparently. Mm-hmm. It's a time travel man that'll do it to you. And it's not like she's doing any crazy stuff right now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. And but I feel like her little, I don't know what are those called, her 
the tentacle-y thing? It's the Leku. Leku? Yeah. Uh, I feel like her Leku is just made out of foam. Like, mm-hmm. it's yeah, so just, stiff. It is and, so like, stiff. It's just you there. You see the wrinkles in it? Yeah, like, they're not, like they're not moving. It j- I don't know. I feel mm. like if that could have a little bit of CGI, that would be nice. I just feel like they've done it better in the mm. prequels, in... Yeah. Other m- movies that we've seen. And maybe it's because it's a movie. They get more time to do mm-hmm. such things. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we're just nitpicking. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should be happy <laughs> that they're trying to do more of a realistic thing instead of giving yeah. us CGI, which we often complain about. So Exactly. That's something I will give them that mm-hmm. they go through. They have done a lot of things that I did not expect them to do practically. Yeah. So I will definitely give them that. Yes. Um, and then finally, just kind of close this off. Let's have a discussion around the idiocy of Luke and the <laughs> I knew Jedi. I to bring this up. <sighs> what are you? Luke is a great character. Mm-hmm. One of my favorites in Star Wars. Possibly even my favorite. He's my favorite real answer. Usually I answer with pancake face because i love nainam i think he's fantastic <laughs> super cool character especially in legends and even some canon like he is a very accomplished mechanic and very skilled i think he's super cool overall though like probably number one is luke yeah second would be nainam luke in legends goes off on his own and he comes back and he learns as much as he can about the previous iterations of the Jedi. He tries to learn their past and learn how they fell in the Clone Wars. Um, he, he takes the effort to learn these things and understand the failings. Like, obviously, he does still make mistakes, but he tries to educate himself on the past of the Jedi. Sadly, it doesn't seem like he's learning anything no. with this iteration because he makes Grogu choose between the Mandalorian and the Jedi. Mm-hmm. He has a decision to choose the chainmail that's made out of the Beskar or Yoda's lightsaber. Okay, can we just like pause right here? Because I haven't gotten your opinion on what do you think about it being chainmail, a little chainmail vest? <laughs> Why do you feel I was that? surprised. Like, that's what I thought it was considering the size and mm-hmm. how much of it was used yeah um i think it would have been cool to see like a cute little breastplate or something like that but i think it makes makes sense for his character honestly i was surprised it was armor really what did you expect i thought it was going to be a weapon they don't make weapons out of beskar what don't you remember the uh what's her face it was a spear no, she specifically says in that episode, uh, Beskar is for armor, not for weapons. Oh, well, I missed that point. <laughs> yeah, no. So I was just over here being like, what is that? Is that like a little like jetpack or something? <laughs> what? <laughs> that oh would have been God. cool. That would have been amazing. Um, it would have been no, a lot. I think it makes sense to be... Uh, but chain Chainmail. Well, it's, it's more flexibility. He's mm-hmm. going to have more maneuverability. Um, Let's hope he doesn't grow out of it. <laughs> but it is chainmail, so you can expand it. I suppose. Yeah, I think that's ultimately why they did it, because you can add to chainmail and you can make it bigger and you yeah. can grow with it. Um, I mean, I'll say I was surprised because I was like, "Oh." Mm-hmm. But freaking Luke doesn't understand <laughs> the ways to motivate Grogu mm-hmm. to teach him properly. Honestly, Luke hasn't learned anything. Of value no, because he's, just he's still regurgitating whatever mm-hmm. he thinks is the Jedi way. Yeah, he's just trying but, to relive the height of the. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw this. I, I posted it a poll on our YouTube channel in the community. Uh, which would you choose if you were Grogu? Would it be the lightsaber or the armor? And I thought I, it's about 60 40. 60% 60 mm-hmm. would choose the lightsaber and 40% would use the armor. Um, let's see. Mm. Out of uh, over 2,000 votes, 39% would do the armor, 61% would do the lightsaber. Interesting. Um, yeah. And one comment I thought did a really good job of kind of just kind of going over the path that Luke is on because mm-hmm. we are going to end with the old man Luke who goes on this island right. to cut himself off from the force. Uh, Jack Zimmy says, there's something really cool, cruel about the choice Luke is presenting. Having grown up with the expanded universe, I thought, 
post Return of the Jedi Luke would be a chill hippie with very loose rules. Yeah. I mean, in Legends, he basically is. Hmm. He is a lot more open. He's going to guide you to the right decisions. Right. But ultimately, it is your choice. And I mean, in Legends, he gets married, so he's all about... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, attachment. And they have some kids. Woo. Um, but yeah, he says, uh, the kind of guy who prioritizes emotional well-being over complete obedience, mm-hmm. but so far he's just as uptight and unfeeling as the old Jedi Order. Even though he's been a Jedi for less than 10 years, I hope he grows a more dynamic personality going forwards, because this guy is just a teacher who never gives you an extension. <laughs> and then uh, St. Germain says, I mean, if we're counting the sequel trilogy as canon, and I guess we are, this is the path Luke goes down expanded universe would have been great to see i agree but based on old man luke who tries to kill his nephew in his sleep yeah that's fair this unfortunately tracks and i think that was a fantastic take and very Mm -hmm. well um very well put that like this is yeah this is the path luke's on um and he's going to sadly be the luke that he is in the last jedi Mm -hmm. um who is He's going to be so invested in the the old ways mm-hmm. that he's not going to see how they are failing his students yeah. and how he is failing his students because of that. And hopefully, in my opinion, I don't know, I, uh, we haven't even had this discussion mm-hmm. yet. I hope he goes with the armor. That's yeah. I think that is the best way forward for Grogu because he is dealing with that fear and he needs to overcome it with Mando, who it can understand him, at least give him the emotional care that he needs and be the supportive figure instead of being forced into this thing because you have force abilities. Right. Or because you have this past. Like, because mm-hmm. Luke says he's just remembering yeah. what his force powers were and all mm-hmm. this stuff. So it's like, sure, good to remember that, but also good to make your own decisions in yeah. your own life. Sort he's of got thing. some trauma. Also, mm-hmm. you know who else had some trauma? That would be Anakin, and he was forced to learn all these things in the Force. Yes, and <laughs> this is true. Was to abide by a certain set of rules, so much so that eventually he he found love and had to go against them and had it in secret because of the ways that the Jedi were put together. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm just sad that Luke is repeating those decisions, yeah. but it makes sense in terms of like realistically. He isn't going to be the smart guy who's going to go and look at the past and see what they did right and see what they did wrong. And he's going to make the same decisions because he has the Jedi as this unbreakable figure in his head that Which really doesn't make they any did sense. everything right. It doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. because he saved his father, which really ultimately this is just our problem with the pre- the, the sequels or whatever the Later on ones. The ones yeah, that are... <laughs> 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 the ones that we can't get into right now. Yeah. But that's the problem with that whole story is that mm-hmm. you you saved your father. You saw this your father's journey. Yeah. And you didn't learn a thing. Like, uh-huh. oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's a shame that we that they feel like they have to show this loop. Yeah, they have to follow the canon that they have created, this Mm -hmm. monstrous monstrosity. Yeah, I would have Um, preferred it to have him start at this and ultimately see that no matter what he does you can still go to the dark side. I think that would have been a more powerful story to see Luke in that space, but it also makes sense that he was so invested in the Jedi, and so invested that he did make the same de- decisions again. Uh, mistakes. See, I don't know. I hope... I, 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 I tweeted this on Twitter. I was like, I would choose the armor so quick it would make Luke cry. <laughs> 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 That's funny. I don't know. I like the whole... <sighs> also, like... I just feel like Luke as a person, the whole way that we see him, He's constantly fighting the dark and the light. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he is this perfect marriage of the dark and the light. Yeah. So why is he going with just Jedi stuff? Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm just, ugh, it just makes me angry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope, I hope Grogu chooses it, but maybe it is. I saw another uh, response to that poll. Like maybe it's a test that if he does it one way or the other, it's just going to show him the ways to teach. Uh 
but I don't, I don't, I don't think this Luke is that wise. We'll see we'll next see. week. I'll be curious to see mm-hmm. by the decision if we keep seeing Luke. Like, if if are they gonna mm-hmm. is he gonna are they gonna make him choose the lightsaber so that we can keep Luke in here? Yeah, but also like the more time that Luke's on the screen, the worse it is. It's true. They probably gotta ditch him. Mm-hmm. So. I hope, I hope because Mark Hamill is still playing Luke. Yeah, he's seventy. That's and amazing. they're going through all these de-aging, deep fake stuff, which it is better than Mandalorian, yes. for sure. Yes. It's gotten a lot better. Mm-hmm. There are moments where it's like, oh, that looks pretty natural. And then yeah. he moves his head. And yeah, then like, it's like, oh, oh no, no. Hang on. This is not human. <laughs> and like, none of the emotion hits yes. his eyes. It's so true. I know. It's like, we're just perpetually sitting mm-hmm. here and we're like, what is he also, actually feeling right yeah, now? <laughs> and they're shooting it in a way to hide his face. That is so unnatural. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many shots where it's it feels so off because mm-hmm. they know if they show his face, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be another six months of production yeah. time that they're gonna have to work through on this. So I think that's a shame. Um, just get an actor. Get freaking Sebastian Stan, who I think already looks like young Luke. <laughs> uh, get someone else who looks close enough or is a good enough actor because they don't have to look the same. Right. Yeah. As long as they have a good actor, they're somewhat similar. And yeah, it's true. It's like we go through all of this stuff with the puppets and mm-hmm. with um, Cad Bane. Yeah. It's like, why don't you just get someone else? Like, mm-hmm. why do you have to focus all of your computery attention on yeah. him just to make it him? Like, mm-hmm. it's just, it's just, we're losing the feeling for Luke. So. Yeah. So, hopefully they do make that decision. I don't think so. Just I don't know. Going, seeing what they've Eventually been doing Eventually Mark so Hamill's going to die. This I'm is sorry. True. Sorry, Mark, but you Love will. Love you, Mark, but you will eventually <laughs> die. You're 70 now. So. Yeah, we'll see. Mm-hmm. I don't have much hope for that, though. I would like it, but they've, they've kind of doubled down on it. But there are rumors that they want to start a, a Luke TV show. So, oh gosh, uh, they had better have someone new for they that. They would have to do something. They would have to. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. That makes me believe that he's not going to be staying in the show then. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, Luke. Yeah. But it's become Mandalorian and not mm-hmm. Book of Boba Fett, honestly. Yeah. yeah. The amount of time. Oh my gosh, so much more invested in Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, okay, how's Mandalorian going to help out Boba? Yeah. Then instead of, uh, Boba needs help. Uh-huh. How is everyone going to... No. It's... I have no emotional attachment to Boba mm-hmm. right now. None. I don't really care what the heck he's doing. <laughs> I don't care about that story. I just want to see more Mando. Yep. I'm like, And also, does, we'll, we'll talk about this after the season ends, but I do want to have a discussion on the whole of the f- the flow of the season. Mm. I think that'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because there's much to, much to break down there. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> But I think that's it for this episode. Man, talking about Boba Fett turns uh, a normal 30-minute podcast to an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hopefully yep. everyone's enjoying this. Um, but yeah, this has been fun. Thank you all for listening so much and sticking around with us. We greatly appreciate it. If you did enjoy this podcast, leave us a review or rate us on Spotify. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. We'll see you next time on Star Wars Uplink. May the Force be with you.